Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to start tonight by just saying how happy I am to be here. In May of 2006, I found myself in the living room of the Abdallah House. The Abdallah House was located in the city of Ramadi, in a section of Ramadi that was known as the stronghold of the terrorist insurgency Al-Qaeda in Iraq, known today as ISIS. As a U.S. Army combat medic, it was my job to take care of U.S. troops both on and off the battlefield. It was also my job to take care of our allies, even take care of our enemies, and yes, take care of any civilians that were injured during combat operations. Hadaya Abdallah, the 31-year-old mother of the Abdallah family, was just as such one of those civilians. She was caught in a crossfire gun battle at a checkpoint and was significantly injured. Her right arm was traumatically amputated at the shoulder. She had several severe internal injuries to her organs, and her right femur was shattered. She was brought to an American military field hospital where she received resuscitative surgery and her life was saved. But a couple of days later, under the pressure of the enemy insurgency, her husband removed her from care, brought her to the home in Ramadi, laid her in a small bed in their living room where she, her condition worsened, she became infected, and she was dying. As the senior combat medic of the medical section of our battalion in charge of that section of the city, I made a decision that we had to uphold our obligation and treat this woman. For the next 12 weeks, I would don 120 pounds of combat gear, weaponry, and military supplies. Myself and 15 infantry soldiers would go into that section of the city, random days of the week, different times at night, by different routes of insertion and different methods of travel. We did this to confuse the enemy so they couldn't figure a pattern, a pattern out and detect us. We would travel down, and sometimes by foot, narrow alleyways, walking through, it and being, uh, walking through the alleyways and walking against the buildings. Now, American soldiers are also known as warriors of the night because we have the greatest advantage of all, and that is our technology of night vision. As we would go down those alleys and come around the corner into the neighborhood of the, Adi the Abdallah house, the infantry would disperse. They would go into adjacent buildings and begin a search and raid procedure that would distract the enemy. And while they were doing that, I would slip through the gate and into the house of the uh, Abdallahs. As I entered the house, my green world of night vision disappeared as I flipped up my goggles and a dim lighted room came into focus. Five little souls would rush me, gang rush me, jump into my arms and hold my neck. The Abdallah children, three girls and two boys. They reminded me of my own children, three girls and two boys who I had not seen in over seven months. But I they came to rush for me because I always brought them something, a toy, some candy, coloring book, something of the such. Anytime I came in and they rushed to me, it, it, just, it, it was such a great relief, and it made me think, this is what Santa Claus must feel like. <laughs> but that's not why I was there. I would go straight to mom and see a Hadaya. I would change her dressings. I would tend to her wounds. I would give her aunt... IV antibiotics. But I also came to realize as much as it was about saving her life, it was equally as much about preserving her family. The one part of the care plan that was very important was her missing arm. You see, in the Muslim culture, the right hand is the sacred hand. Anything clean and sacred must be done with the right hand. Without a right hand, not to mention a right arm, Hadiah 
could be seen as disposable. So when we came back time after time, I would bring experts with me, doctors, a nutritionist, I brought a physical therapist who knew somebody, who knew somebody, who knew somebody else in the United States who said that if we could get a measurement, they could provide us an artificial arm. And even an artificial arm would validate her in her society. So in that May, as I entered the house and was gang rushed again, made my way over to the small bed, Hadaya was mostly healed in actually walking. We had a chance to sit down and reflect on this three-month journey we've been on together. We talked about our family. We talked about our faith. We talked about peace. She prayed that sometime I may return to Ramadi and see it in the light of peace instead of the darkness of war. She said to me, I have never in my wildest dreams thought I would meet an American soldier so compassionate. I said, well, we're coming back and next time we're bringing your arm. She said, no, you cannot come back. I thought maybe she misunderstood the interpreter. So I said it again, we're coming back. And this time we're bringing your arm. It's very exciting. She said, la, no, you cannot come back. I have received word that the insurgents have discovered you. They are planning on capturing you and killing you. She then, with her left hand, held my hand, looked me straight in the eyes, and said to me, you saved my life. Now allow me to save yours. I'm happy to be here tonight. Thank you.